forgotten her. So if you see her, please explain to her that I can't write. No, I'm not working on the farm, I'm in the kitchen. I'm only a red badge and you have to be a yellow or green badge before you can go on to the farm or gardens. You have to be here at the very least two months before you can have anyone visit you and at least six before your visitor can take you out. I'm sorry I didn't write last week, but I can only write one letter and I had to answer my child care officers. I miss you and I wish I was back at Beach Home. Please give my love to Glenwyn, Mr. David, Blackie and all at the orchard. Well, please write to me again soon. Loads of love, Gail. P.S. Do you think you could send me some photos of the little ones as I have been talking about them and I would like to show everyone what they're like? Right soon, Gail. Her next home, Exeter Prison, waiting to be moved on. This time to Borstal. At Farringdon House, she'd fought authority and wouldn't give in. In court, they called her grossly undisciplined. Dear Mrs. David, well, as you can see by the paper I'm using, I'm in Exeter prison waiting till I go to a Borstal. I guess I knew it had to happen sooner or later, and now it has. I'm really sorry that it has, but I suppose I've just got to face up to it now. I don't know how long I will have to do at Borstal, but I guess it'll be up to me now. Please don't stop writing to me and please don't disown me because you're the one person that I really do care about. I haven't had a letter from you lately, but I think Mrs. Drysdale wouldn't let me have any letters from you the last few weeks I was at Farringdon because I was kept locked up in solitary confinement till I went to court. When I went to court, nobody came on my side, not even my welfare officer. I felt really awful. I was really scared when I first got here, but everyone has been quite all right to me so far, and I feel a lot better now. Well, enough of my troubles. How are they all at Beach Home? How are the little kids in Ash? I wanted to work with children, but I don't suppose I'll be able to now. Still, you never know. How are everyone at Sutton Grove? I hope they're all keeping well. Give my love to Blackie. Loads of love always, Gail. P.S. I miss you very much, and I really am sorry. So please write back to me soon. Gail. Gail was never to see the kids at Beach Home again. From Exeter, she went for Borstal training. They moved her on for this to Holloway Prison and put her in a cell. I think that the, the best and most humane care probably she had from the time she left us was in Holloway. I really believe that that was the happiest and the most humane patch after she left Beach Home. The girl whose ambition had been to look after children was now locked up with the women who were later to introduce her to drugs. But Gail knew nothing of the danger at the time. Dear Mrs. David, thank you very much for your two letters. I didn't know that you'd been to Czechoslovakia. Why didn't you write and tell me? I was ever so worried. You know what I'm like, always think the worst. It's not too bad here, not half as bad as I thought it was going to be. In a way, it's better here than it was in Farringdon. Anyway, I can have people visit me here and I can have anyone write to me. I've just been sticking pictures on my wall. I've got some great ones of Twiggy. If you can, I hope you will come and see me while I'm in here. I don't suppose my mother would want to come. Love to Blackie. Loads of love, Gail. P.S. Write soon. I miss you very much. Well, and she came out of prison on her 18th birthday, and she came into London on a Saturday with a warrant to travel and 30 shillings from the aftercare people on a Saturday afternoon, went into this hostel. A job had been found for her, and the hostel had been found for her. She'd never seen either. She met their friends who had been in Borstal with her, and one of them happened to be a drug addict. She had been found a job as a petrol pub attendant and was due to start work at night. These girls said, oh, don't go to work tonight, your first night out and so on. You come up to Piccadilly with us. And this girl went up to Piccadilly, and there she was given drugs. She told me this herself many times since, that on that night, these friends gave her drugs, heroin mainly, and she 
returned to the hostel the next day and she was turned out of the hostel along with her friend on the grounds that they would not keep drug addicts. And they left and they began to sleep in Piccadilly and they began to live there and take drugs from people who gave them drugs. And within a matter of three weeks, at this very crucial time, no one knew who she, where she was. No one knew anything about where she was. I used to think about it, but I don't think anyone was caring. I know no one was caring because she was only a name to the probation officer. How could she be caring about someone who really was hard only on the fringe of an enormous caseload? Gail's decline was rapid. A heroin addict living rough in the streets of London can't last long. When she needed sleep, she went to the ladies' lavatory under Piccadilly Circus. She slept in what the women addicts knew as number one toilet. After 18 months as an addict, Gail almost died. In Charing Cross Hospital, Mrs. David was told she'd been found unconscious in the street and the hospital diagnosed septicemia. She'd injected herself with a dirty needle. Mrs. David visited her. It was here in hospital that Gail talked to us 10 months ago when we were making a program about the effects of institutional life. We didn't know then that Gail herself was right when she said that only death was left. During the time that you were in the children's homes, did you ever try to get in touch with your mother? I don't think so. I don't know. I think I did, yeah. Once or twice. Did you meet her in that time? Yeah. How did that work out? Not very well. Why not? I just don't like her. I hate her. I dislike her. You hate your mother? Yeah. Why is that, Gail? She put me away in the first place. When you were in one children's home after another, you were always running away from them. Yeah. Wanting to get out. What made you unhappy in children's homes, do you say? Uh, you were just, like, when you went to school, you felt different from the other kids. Because you couldn't, you know, you couldn't take your mate, mates home for tea and that, could you? There was too many other kids back, back then, you know. And you used to have labels in your clothes. You know, like your coats and your jumpers. And the kids used to say, what's that, you know. You felt odd. So I, in the end, I didn't like going to school. So I just used to run away. But what about now? You left the children's homes. They indeed have nothing to do with you. But Mrs. Dever, the teacher, for instance, she still visits you. I know. What do you feel about that? I don't know. She wants to come visit me. <laughs> don't know why. Don't you care whether she comes or not? Well, it's nice to have somebody come visit you, isn't it? I don't think I'd really care, though, if she'd come or not. How have you been spending the last few months before you came into hospital for treatment? Fixing. Fixing? What does that mean? Taking heroin. How did you start on that? When I was in Boston, I used to talk about it. And when I come out, I would just thought I'd try. Where were you living then? Nowhere. Well, where did you sleep? I didn't. You used to sleep in the toilets during the day and then just go down the club and dance at night. Do you used to sleep in the toilet? Yeah. Sit on the floor and go to sleep. Put your coat around you. 